Yeah, you are a little emotional, Stephen. I take it down a notch. It's Friday. You should be in a good mood. All right, guys. I want to ask you this. Obviously, mode. Tom Brady Other playing in his tenth Super Bowl. Oh my goodness! Here we go. Tom Brady's playing his tenth Super Bowl. He has an opportunity to win his seventh ring. Michael Jordan obviously won six rings. Dan, I'll start with you. Will a win make Brady the greatest winner in the modern era of team sports? I need a clarification, Molly. Can I add in coaches to this conversation sure. or not? Is it just players? No, you can't add in coaches. Just, just players. players. I mean, if we're going to add in coaches, if we're going to add in coaches, we're not. we, we no, have no coaches. Guy, Gina no. There, okay? no, just no coaches. No coaches. No coaches. Oh, there we go. Yeah, actually, because you went Gino and you oh, went UConn, I'll Molly. allow it. Now yeah, carry on. So dirty. <laughs> You call I, uh, Yeah, if Tom Brady wins, if, if they win, Tom becomes the greatest team winner or winner in team sports. I think the biggest reason why is if you look at the salary cap reality of the NFL, right? There's 53 guys on every NFL roster, all right? There's about $190 million, give or take, uh, for the salary cap. That's about $3 million that you can give to each player. I know it's allocated differently, but each player. Now, baseball doesn't have a salary cap. Basketball does. There's is about 110 million. There's 15 guys on a roster. You're looking at being able to pay guys uh, on average about 7 million. So the the amount of money that you have to give to supply your football team is way less in football. That obviously makes it a greater challenge. Number two, there's 11 guys on the field at every time. There is more variance for failure, more variance for um, a mess up because you have a greater number of people on the field at the same time in football than any other sport. So there's more a necessity for Tom to be better to kind of cover up for those. And then the reality is no position in sports is more dependent on the quarterback. No position has greater impact in team sports than the quarterback. And so for those reasons, if Tom's able to pull this off with all of those attributes or variables tied to this, he's the greatest winner in team sports greater than Bill Russell, greater than Wayne Gretzky, um, I put Tom up there. Um, I disagree. First of all, a hot goalie can really affect the outcome of a postseason series. I'd say a great superstar in basketball has more of an influence over the fortunes of his team than a quarterback in football. And that's one of the reasons arguing against Michael Jordan. The answer is Michael Jordan. First of all, Bill Russell, by the way, was playing in a very different league. Far fewer teams, not as much worldwide competition for those spots, um, not as much international talent, etc., but really far fewer teams. And he had a great team around him. Although Bill Russell... 21 times in his career as an amateur and pro faced elimination, right? It came down to the deciding game. He was 21 and 0. Bill Russell is on a short list of the greatest winners ever. Any time you talk about winners. The answer is Michael Jordan in the, in the modern era. Let's say post Bill Russell. The answer is Michael Jordan. He doesn't have an Eli Manning on his resume. He had no rival on the other team because after all, if you give Brady all the credit for winning, <clears throat> then Eli... <clears throat> who outclutched Brady in those Super Bowls, also deserves credit for beating him. There's no one like that with Michael Jordan. There was never a contemporary of Jordan's great or a guy who rose under pressure who ever knocked him out when he had an all-star with him. When Jordan, when Pippen reached his prime, his second year as an all-star, Jordan was six for six in whenever he played a full season in the championship, never went a game seven. The reason Michael Jordan's brand is the biggest by some multiple of anyone else in the history of world sports is because he is the ultimate winner. He was better than Magic and Bird by his third season. He's the greatest player of all time or the best ever by his third year when he averaged 37 points in a hand-checking league. So That's not what did it. It's that once he got a crew, he never lost. 6-0 and with six knockouts. Well, according to you, Bill Russell never lost either, 21-0. and That we can't ignore that in those closeout games. I'm a 11, modern game. and Listen, 11 titles, 11 titles in 13 years on a pro level, a national champion, an Olympic gold medalist. <laughs> and the last part that really resonates with me is those very times that you're talking about he was living in. Think about what he had to go through. When you talk about boxing, because very few people on the planet know more boxing than you, when you talk about boxing and we call Ali the greatest, it wasn't just because of his skills in the ring. It was the level of adversity that he had to face and what he endured and what he had to overcome in order to becoming a champion. Well, let's take into account that for Bill Russell. In Boston, Massachusetts, this dude is accomplishing these things? 
winning with such a degree of regularity and then becoming a player coach and being a champion as a player a coach. So you're talking about greatness, accomplishments on the court, leadership with, with a level of adversity that he faced that is, 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 is to some degree is unparalleled in terms of, uh, of uh, you know, just adversity faced by athletes. If there were no Bill Russell, would there have ever been the Michael Jordans? And so those are the kind of things that I think about when we talk about the greatest winner in team sports. And oh, by the way, they weren't all black players. Had some white players he was coaching too. So he had to get those dudes in that particular period of time to listen to him and buy into what he was selling as an authoritative when people figure. people didn't like when the black guy as, was the boss. As the yeah. black guy was the boss, Stephen he was a. an authoritative figure, and still they won. Dad, I don't, I'm I'm going to give it to you right it. now. Let me just say, quickly say, all that Stephen A. said is true about Bill Russell. Look up his Game 7 numbers. Just look up Bill Russell Game 7 numbers. Mm -hmm. If you want a good laugh, 30 points, 40 boards. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I mean, here, here's, a, here's a question I'll ask you guys. Um, doesn't the, the reality that basketball and baseball um, have series, like those guys can have off nights, those guys can fall down 2-0 and still win the series and lead themselves to winning the championship. Like, football is sudden death. Football is win or go home. And to go on that journey, like, you can't... Tom has never really been afforded the journey of having an off night, having a game that you're not at your best. Like, when he's gotten into the playoffs, more often than not, he's had to go win three straight games. And without, without like, being perfect or darn near it in all of those opportunities his football team is going to lose those games and so the amount of championships goes do so down so like i think that's got to carry some weight for tom brady to realize like there wasn't the series aspect of it where you could fall down and not have your best start and still climb your way into it i'm assuming russell and and jordan wayne gretzky a mickey mantle type of guys those guys did that stuff tom brady was never afforded the opportunity to be off or have a wrong a night point. or an off night and still go win his championships. That's a good point, but let me put it another way. History of sports, ball in, the, in this player's hands. Take a worldwide vote. All right, who do you want the ball in the hands of? History of sports. I'll bet you Michael Carson Jordan Wentz. gets, I'll bet you Michael <laughs> Jordan gets more votes than everyone else put <laughs> together. And that's why he is you're, the greatest. You're, you're Guys. talking, Max. Did you not hear what Dan said? What's that? Carson said, Wentz? Oh, said I, Carson I, Wentz. He I'm said Carson to Wentz. <laughs> I'm trying to ignore that. He said Carson Wentz. I, <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, it was such a good point I was making. You, right. you just ruined it. Yeah. You ruined the whole thing. Carson Wentz. <laughs> Sorry, Max. I <laughs> had to, man. What's the matter with you? Right. If it was Mariano Rivera or, uh, with the ball in his hand or David Ortiz with the bat in his hand, or, or, by the way, other basketball players, including Kobe or anyone else you want to mention who's mm -hmm. clutch. If it's a football player, Joe Montana or Tom Brady, any soccer player you want to mention, anyone, Wayne Gretzky or anyone in hockey or even the most clutch guys. But then say Michael Jordan. The game is on the line. Fate of the universe on the line. Earth can hand the ball to one guy who ever lived. Michael Jordan wins that in a landslide. Yeah, but he you're, is the guy. But, but He's you're, the you're, winner. You're picking a different topic. I think Michael. No. So wait a minute. We heard you. Game on the line. We heard you. Everybody heard you. Closer. Here's the deal. Michael Jordan, to me, is the greatest player who ever lived. You know how I feel about him. But the point that I'm trying to make is that when we talk about the greatest winner, we're talking about a multitude of things that come into the equation. And when you think about the team sport that it is and how much harder and how one person can't necessarily dictate the outcome like they can in other sports. And then you take into consideration what Tom Brady has managed to do. You hear former players saying the Patriot way is about Tom Brady. It doesn't mean that they're right, but this is how they feel. OK, you look at Bill Belichick, the greatest coach in the modern era. But people are saying, look at what you are with Tom Brady. Then Tom Brady goes to. Tampa. Well, Bruce Arians was the coach of a 7-9 and nine team. Bruce Arians a team, a coach that took the Arizona Cardinals to the a NFC Championship game, but they got trounced by the Carolina Panthers years ago. Bruce Arians was the guy that took over for Pagano when Pagano went down because of his, his battle with cancer uh, a few years ago in Indianapolis. He was also the offensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but his greatest success has been this season with Tom Brady, who happens to be 43 mm -hmm. years Good of point. age, and you got guys clamoring to play with him and what have you. There's something about him 
as a leader, not just a player, that we can't ignore. And then if you got a seventh Super Bowl championship on your resume and you've beaten the modern-day GOAT in Patrick Mahomes a lot. to pull it off, I don't know how we can look at anybody outside of Bill Russell and as being the greatest winner in a team sport. You guys are making good arguments. It's a good. I think Michael Jordan wins, but I want to shout one other guy out we haven't mentioned, Kareem. Kareem. Of course. The greatest college player ever. He could was only allowed to play three years back then. Three-time player of the year. Three-time champion. But you know why he doesn't they get it, right? They almost never lost. And then six but champions. But you know why he doesn't get it, right? Pro. He, he doesn't get I'm not saying because I love Kareem. All right, guys, let's Kareem. make some predictions. Hold, hold on, hold on. I love Come Kareem. On. It's just that he won five of his six after Magic. he got Magic. Okay. Go ahead, Molly. All right. We'll save the rest of the cream debate for another day because it's a Super Bowl Friday. So let's start making some picks. Tell me why. I'm going to start first. I'm going with that bad man, Tom Brady, Teflon Tom, going for number seven, winning MVP, Bucks, 31-27. See you all on Monday. Stephen A.? Well, first of all, if Tom Brady were to win, they could score three points and we'd give him the MVP just because he's Tom Brady. They ain't going to vote for anybody else in Tampa if they win the MVP, please. They'd give it to him. Right? They'd give it to him right now. But I'm going with Kansas City, 38-34. I think that Tyreek Hill is a monster. I think Travis Kelsey is too. And Patrick Mahomes is the one throwing them the football. I think too much offensive firepower when it counts. I'm going with Kansas City by four, 38-34. Um, 31-27, Molly's right, but it's going to be the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes is going to do exactly what Dan said he has to do. He's going to be Superman in a game where they should not be favored. They should be the underdog. Patrick, Patrick Mahomes will defy logic and, and have the game of his life, and the Chiefs will win narrowly, probably in a comeback. I like it. Listen, I'm taking Kansas City. I took Kansas City back in February, March, April, May, June, July, August. I'm sure as heck not going to turn my back now. Uh, I think their defense is way better than people have given it credit for. I also think in football, sometimes you ride turnover waves. And at some point, that wave stops. And, and Tampa Bay has ridden a turnover wave. And Patrick Mahomes does a lot of things. He just doesn't give the ball away that often. I don't expect him to do it in the Super Bowl. They're the best coach team in football. They've got the best player in football. And they're the roster that is most constructed to play high-level football in the NFL right now. Kansas City goes back-to-back, -back and we start the conversation of can they win three in a row. All right, real quick, guys, give me your MVP. Dan, you up first. Fifteen. That's from Holmes. I just Max. don't want to go the obvious route. It's easy to pick the quarterbacks. That's a given. But I'm going to go... Outside, I'm going to say Tyreek Hill. Patrick Mahomes wins his okay. second consecutive Super Bowl MVP. I don't know if he deserved the first All one. All right, y'all. Enjoy the Super Bowl. One. We'll debate about it on Monday. Dan, have fun.